Okay, I think, hi everybody. Um, welcome to Fab Fit Friday. I'm gonna try to keep my microphone really close to my face because I think that's why some people have a hard time hearing me. And you can see I'm all jazzed up with elastic today. Um, today we're gonna kick off the draft-a-thon, draft-along for um, a basic bodice. Let me just stop and say hi to Janie and Lynn. Welcome. Hi, Patricia. You can't hear me? Um, mm, hold on. Volume, volume, volume. Let me just see. All right, I want to make sure people can fucking hear me. All right. All right, so I'm going to try to really talk um, right in front of my microphone so everybody can hear me. You can't hear it all? Pelargonia and Patrice, let me know if you can hear me. Um, I've got my microphone right here. Um, Janie can hear me. Okay, so I think on my end, you know, I'm doing everything I can. I do know some people have trouble with audio, but I'm going to talk right, right into my Bose microphone, and I'm going to try to be nice and loud. Okay, so I'm super excited about this series because, um, number one, I've gotten a bunch of requests for drafting tutorials, and um, I love to geek out on doing things that have to do with patterns, and drafting patterns is really a fun thing for me. So I'm super excited to be kicking this off today. You'll notice I have all sorts of um, elastic on me right now. What's happening? Wait, hold on one second. Let me just say hi to Lynn. And Patrice, welcome. And, oh dear, what's happening to this? Hmm. All right, it's saying that my stream health is, um, just causing a problem. I don't know how to fix that, so. I'm hoping that my stream health, please. Um, hmm. Hold on one second, guys. Can you guys see me and hear me? Hopefully, my s hopefully my stream health will improve. I don't know how to adjust that. It's saying that it's a little bit, um, I'm using the wrong thing. All right, so I'm gonna, just going to keep going and ignore my little yellow arrow here. Hi, Diane. Welcome. Hi, Ingrid. Ingrid. And um, all right, so here's what we're going to do. Today, I'm going to show you how to take body measurements you need for your front bodice. Hi, Barbara. Welcome. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to accurately take measurements. And then I also have, there's a link in the description below for a front bodice measurement chart. I have it right here. Okay, so you guys can download your own free copy of this chart. So I'm going to show you how to fill it in today. And I just want to stand up for a second. So the first thing we want to do, pardon my outfit, it's really not attractive, but basically I put three elastics on. I put one on my high bust, my full bust, and my waist. And you can see here, I made some markings on the elastic. So my center front right here, 
my center of my bust, my where my apex is here and here. So that's, um, you need to know where your apex is on your bust. And then I also put my center front on my upper bust elastic. So you want this elastic to sit at your natural waist, okay? And then you want the other ones to be at full bust, high bust. Um, and you'll notice I'm wearing a little necklace. I have this piece of elastic on the base of my neck because I'm going to use that to measure my shoulder length from the tip of my shoulder to the base of my neck. So I have a little piece of elastic around my neck. Now a guide for putting elastic around your neck, if you can put a piece of elastic around your neck and not have it be choking you and not having it be riding up onto your neck, that's a good length for the elastic because you want it right around the base of your neck. If Basically what I'm trying to do is recreate some of the guides you have on a dress form, okay? And then I'm just gonna turn to the side here. Basically the elastic that's going around your high bust is about two inches below your armpit and that you need that measurement too at your side seam for some of the measurements. So these elastics are gonna help us get accurate measurements. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to take these measurements. I'm gonna fill out my front bodice chart. Then you guys can download your own front bodice chart. It's free and you can fill in your measurements. And then next Friday, we're actually going to draft the front bodice. Um, after I show you the measurements, how to take the measurements, I'm going to show you a um, sort of a sample. I have a sample draft here. Okay, so I'm going to show you this. And I've labeled where all of the measurements are going to go to, to make your pattern, your front bodice. Oh, hi. Amelia says she's finally made it to a live welcome I'm so excited you're here and also I want to welcome Bong clean Bong Klee. I don't know how to pronounce your name but welcome 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 um, I'm seeing a bunch of new faces today so I just want to thank everybody for following along with me um, and let's get started all right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to measure my full length. Now, what does it mean by full length? We want to know how long the bodice is from the tip of the shoulder at the neckline down to the waist. That is what is considered full length. Hi, Andrea. Welcome. So I'm just going to stand up here. Oh, Karen from Sweden. Welcome. Ooh, I feel so international. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I am gonna measure, let me just get me so you can see what I'm measuring, from my, um, at, at the elastic around my neck. I just have to get a, get a knot out of here. Um, from the elastic at my neck, I'm just gonna feel for that, oops here, straight down to my waist. That is considered the full length measurement. So I'm gonna just use the, t the bottom of my elastic at my waist as where I'm measuring from. So just make sure that's you know straight up and down like that. Mine is 20 inches. So I'm gonna fill in my full length a measurement as 20 inches and I'm gonna work with a pencil in case I have to erase so I've got 20 inches there then I want to know my across the shoulder so I am gonna measure from the center of my the base of my neckline here to the tip of my shoulder but I'm gonna go in this direction so I am gonna measure from from right here 
and I'm going to measure across to here. And I want to just get to the tip of my shoulder, which I'm going to say is right here. So I'm going to use this number. Okay, so that's eight inches. And then another thing you can do is if it's easier to measure from the tip of your shoulder to the tip of your shoulder across like this, so get it so it's, you know, right at the tip on this side to the tip on this side, and then look at it. And so I got 16 inches, so that's a good bet that from center out is eight inches. So I'm going to make a note of that. Now we want to know the center front length. So instead of going from the tip of the shoulder over here, we're just going to go from the center neckline. And I'm just going to um, I'm just going to go from the base of my neck here down to my waist right here. And again, I'm going to go to the bottom of the elastic. Oops. Like that. So interestingly, that measurement is 17 and 3 quarters. So it's fun to know, like from my full length is, um, you know, 20. And then down here at my center front is 17 and 3 quarters. Okay, let me just see what people are saying here. Um, Andrea says, if your shoulders are different lengths, do you take the longest or the shortest? That is a good question. Um, well, for now, let's go with um, let's go with longest because we can pull it in when we go to fit it later versus having it be too short. So go with your longer shoulder for now, and then we can figure out how to adjust that once we create the bodice and try it on later. Um, oh, Intras says, I appreciate you doing the measurements on yourself more helpful when a lot of us live alone. Well, yes, and so the reason why I'm only doing the front today is because I want to think of a good way to take the back measurements. Um, I may have to have a helper to do that. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to take my body measurements by myself for the back. And just so you know, a lot of the measurements we're taking in the front are going to be the same in the back as well. And I'm looking at myself on screen and I just want to apologize for my messy look today. I don't have makeup on because my studio is 100 degrees today and um, I elected not to put an air conditioner in because they're very loud. So I'm a little bit warm and a little bit beautiful, so just bear with me. Um, hi, Erin Green from Screenland, Culver City, California. Hi, Kathy, and hi, Linda Lee. Welcome, everybody. So we're taking measurements for our front bodice draft. That's what we're doing today. Um, now we're going to do bust arc. Now the interesting thing about the bust arc measurement is, like, when you're doing pants or a skirt, the width of the pattern is decided by the full hip measurement. Well, when you're working on a bodice, the full width of the pattern is um, determined by your bust arc. And the reason why that is true is because you're gonna go from your center front um, all the way across to the side seam here. And that's actually the largest measurement for most people um, on a bodice that just goes to the waist. So we are going to measure the bust arc and that's going to be from right here and then I'm just going to go across my full bust to my side seam and I'm just going to feel for the side seam on my tank top okay and I'm going to wear the same tank top when I do my back measurements so I'm just feeling for that side seam so my bust arc is 14 and a quarter. So I'm gonna make a note of that, 14 and one quarter. Now I'm going to do the shoulder slope measurement. We wanna know 
how much lower this is compared to this up here. So the slope of your shoulder, the way we're going to figure that out is we're going to use a, a vertical measurement that's diagonal. So we are going to measure from our center front waist right here up to the tip of the shoulder like this. And what that measurement is going to do is it's going to allow us to determine the slope of our shoulder later. And I'll show you that in a minute. So from here, right over the bust um, to the, the, the tip of the shoulder. Okay, so we've got 20 and a quarter. Um, oh, so Rena is at work listening and she'll watch after work. I love that. All right, so my shoulder slope is 20 and a quarter. And then the dart placement is another one we need. Oh, let me just see here. Oh, Linda Lee has a class on Craftsy entitled Fitting Solo for Measurements to Muslin, showing how to take all these measurements Jen is doing now. Oh, well, that's nice. I've never met Linda Lee, but I hear she's a lovely lady. Um, hello, Zoe from South England. Welcome. Okay, and so then Torch... Singer has a suggestion to measure the center back length. You could pull the measuring tape under the waist elastic um, to the top point. The elastic should hold it in place so you can grab it to measure the waist. Yes, I think I am going to be using elastics for the back as well. That's a good suggestion, Torch. Thank you. Okay, so when we measured from the tip of our, show, our neck... So I'm just going to put this right here. And then we measured down, straight down to get our full length like this. Okay, That's also giving us the position of the princess seam at the waist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put, keep my finger here, right here, and then I'm going to measure from that part. So I'm basically going to just switch my tape and then I'm going to pull it across to my side seam. And again, I'm just feeling for the side seam on my tank top, like this. Okay, so right here. So here to here, I'm going to say it's six inches. That's going to be my dart placement. Okay, and really what that it means is it's basically the position of where the um, bus start or the princess seam line would be. And here's the thing about this measurement. We can change it if it's not attractive or if it doesn't work out. We just need a, a place or a guide to put our dart. So I'm going to put down six inches here. Six inches. Okay, then I need to do the, the shoulder length. And this is, again, why I have this elastic here. Um... Lynn said, I noticed that your shoulder rose slightly when you measured the slope. Oh, well, let me try that again. All right, so let me just do that again. Lynn made a very good observation. When you're taking your measurements, you really want to stand natural. You don't want to do this. So maybe I was doing this, so let's try it again. Okay, so I'm just going to stand, you know, nice and still. I'm going to measure. I'm still getting 20 inches, 20 and a quarter. Yeah, no, I think it's okay. I'm going to go with the 20 and a quarter that I got the first time. Um, but that is a very good point. Make sure when you're measuring you're not doing this. Because if I measured this, this would be longer than if I measured this. So keep yourself relaxed. Okay, so my shoulder length is going to be from my little necklace around my neck 
at the base of my shoulder here. Oops, let me just get it. So when I'm looking in my camera monitor, I'm, I'm mirror image. That's why I'm having trouble. So I'm trying not to look. Okay, so I'm just going to measure from shoulder, from the neckline like this, up here, right up against that elastic to the tip of my shoulder, which I'm going to say is right here. So I'm getting four and three quarters inches. I'm going to try it again. Okay, so Zoe is getting confused where the tip of the shoulder is. If you lift up your arm, you're going to feel a little divot. See, and you can almost see it a little bit. See how I have like this little divot right here? That's what I consider the tip of my shoulder. So right there. Oops. Right there. So like right there, just feel for the, you can feel the bone moving when you raise your arm. So somewhere right there. And I'm just going to measure that one more time. Tip. So if I put it tip and then I come up to here, let me see if I can do it this way. If I put my tape measure back there, then I can just worry about measuring it up to here. Yeah, four and three quarters. Four and three quarters is good. Yay, Ann, Ann gets to watch live. Welcome, Ann. We're taking body measurements for the front bodice draft, which we're going to do tomorrow. Um, all right, so I have my shoulder length. Um, now I'm going to do the bust depth, and the way we're going to do that is I'm going to go from... The neckline at the tip of the shoulder, oops, up here, neckline to apex down here. Okay, so that is going to be 12 and a half for me. 12 and a half. And then we are going to do armhole depth. Now this is where we need the elastic that's wrapping around our high bust. We are going to measure from the, the um, from the tip of the shoulder to below the armhole. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the tip of my shoulder again go here, tip of the shoulder, and I'm just going to go down. This is a little bit awkward. I'm going to hold it with this hand here so I can bring this down to the elastic at the side seam. Okay, so see it kind of crosses um, across the front of you to the side seam at the elastic, which is about two inches below the armpit. So that's going to be, for me, that's 11 inches. And we're going to use that to determine the base of our armhole. Okay, and then we need the bust span. The bust span is just from these, these notches. So from wherever your apex is, so here to here, my apex is. Okay, see, I've got one right here, and I've got one right here. Okay, so that's the fullest part of your bust. I know that mine measures 8 inches there, so I'm going to go with 8 inches. I measured it when I put the marks on my elastic. Okay. Oh, and... An easy one is from the elastic on the side seam, 
I mean, from that top elastic. Oops. All right, wait a minute. Let me do it. Okay, so. No, let me just stay on the same side. I'm sorry. So I just want to measure from. And I'm going to start. I'm going to hold it down here at my side seam. Okay. And then I'm just going to come straight up. So where's my side seam? My side seam's right here. And then I'm just going to come straight up to the elastic like that. So it's easy if you start down at the bottom at your waist. And then you get that measurement. So my side seam is 10 inches. So that's the area between two inches below your armpit down to your waist, 10 inches. All right, I have just two more things across upper bust. So now what we want to do is we want to imagine our, so like where the tip of our shoulder is straight down, that's where your sleeve or your armhole seam is going to be. So we want to measure from center front, oops, let's go this way, center front over to where that's going to be. And actually we could come up a little bit higher. We can start maybe here and just go to here. So basically we want the measurement to be below, like right below the tip of the shoulder. So for me, that's going to be eight inches. So it says across upper bust on the chart, but just go up a little bit higher onto your chest, maybe two inches above your upper bust so you can capture this measurement. And then the last one is the front waist measurement. That's an easy one. We're just going to measure from the center around, let me go the same way, sorry, center around to the side seam. Okay. So that's 10 inches. And I can tell you that's a pretty accurate measurement because my waist almost measures 40 inches. So I know that that's a good measurement, 10 inches. Okay, so I filled out my chart. Now, Rena would like to know if doing measurements helps um, um, helps getting the sleeve to fit properly. We are going to draft a sleeve to match the armhole that we draft. So we are going to be making a sleeve to go into this bodice. So. Um, I think it will get you close because we're going to be using your body measurements to create the sleeve as well. So I think that that, you know, would, oh, I'm hoping we're going to have a, a fitted um, bodice here. Um, Kathy would like to know if I'm taking these measurements from a book. Okay, so I am in fact using two different books and I'm going to show you them. Let me just take this off now. Okay, so I'm going to switch my view here. Here's my messy table. I think I'll put myself over here. Okay. All right, so I am using information from, this is a classic uh, Jean Min Minot does um, fitting in the 70s or 60s or 50s. I don't even know when she did this, but this is like an antique book. It's out of print, but you can find it at um, eBay. I found mine on eBay. It has a lot of really good information in it about fitting um, tops. So some of the information I'm using is from this book. And then the other book I'm using, which is the book that most design schools use, is the Helen Joseph Armstrong drafting book. So I did take measurements from here onto my chart. Um, so that's where I got the actual measurements from. So 
here's how I just want to show you basically how we're going to use these measurements to draft the, the front bodice next week. Sorry, let me just clear out some of this mess. All right, so the black lines that you can see, um, I used my L-shaped ruler to draw a vertical and horizontal guideline to get started right here, okay? So that's going to be the start of your draft. Now you're going to want to um, you're going to want to um, make sure your vertical length is longer than you need a little bit, and your you know your horizontal is a little bit longer than your bust um, arc measurement. So that's the first thing you're going to need. Now, just to show you how we're going to draft this. Um, oh, so Kat, oh, wait a minute, hold on one second. Oh, Andrea said something, but then she retracted it. So maybe you can say it again. Um, and Kathy has the Armstrong book. And Sophie says, hello from Hungary. Hello, Sophie, welcome. Ooh, I feel so excited. We're international today. We have a lot of people from different countries and around the United States. I feel so happy that I'm bringing you all together to work on this. This is fun. Okay, so let me just show you where the measurements that we just took are going to go on this paper to make um, to make the front bodice. Oh, Andrea said Jan Minot taught her method at Berkeley area in the 1990s. Oh, I would have loved to have taken her classes. Let me just see. Um, I just want to see, oh, see, this was, this was copyrighted in 1969, so I thought she was older, but I love it that she was around in, even in the 90s. She does a really nice, um, you know, easy to follow method, and this version is, has bodice and skirt in it, and I also have the pants book, um, but, you know, I like to look at you know, how she did it, and then, you know, the Joseph Armstrong book I taught, um, when I taught drafting and draping at design school, we used those textbooks, so I actually have a few different versions of the Helen Armstrong book. Oh, hi, Paula. Paula's from Gosport, UK. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so the first measurement that we took is the full length measurement and that's going to be from your center front right here all the way up to what that measurement was okay so that's the full length measurement and you can see we square across to find the shoulder the tip of the shoulder at the neckline is right here oh Dodi says Jan Jan Minot is still available for download if anyone wants more info, very reasonably priced. If you have a link for that, Dodie, and you want to put it in there, that's I'm perfectly happy with that. Um, like I said, I found my hard copy books on eBay. Um, and you probably can even still find them. I mean, I haven't looked in a while. I've had them for a few years, but they are really fun to look at. Okay, so we're going to go from here and up to the top is your full length measurement so that's what you're going to need that for and that's going to basically designate the full length of the front bodice the next measurement is across shoulder so from center front to tip of shoulder and the tip of the shoulder is over here so this horizontal line is your cross shoulder measurement that you're going to draw oh Simon says, thanks for doing it on yourself. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, next week on Friday, I'll be showing you how to do the back measurements yourself, and I will figure out how to do that in the most easy, non-cumbersome way. So I want to think about it for a minute. Um, so we'll be doing the back next Friday. Um, all right, so 
the center front length now, you're going to measure from the bottom again up to where the base of your neck was. So you can see here, this line right here is your center front that also will then show you where the base of your neckline is. Oh, Amelia wants to know if anyone knows how to live stream to Roku. Oh, I don't know how to do that. I do know that sometimes people who follow me here will then show me pictures that they're watching me on their big 75 inch screen TVs, which <laughs> I find kind of funny because yeah, they're sending me a picture of watching me on TV. So the picture is of a TV with me on the screen and it's quite large and I find it very silly. Um, if someone knows how to live stream to Roku, please, you know, you can help Amelia. Otherwise, maybe I can research it and let you know next week because I don't know the answer to that. Um, all right, so we've got our center front. That also indicates the base of the front neckline. The next thing is the bust arc. Remember I said the bust arc determines the width of the pattern. So that's going to be from your center front out along this horizontal line. Okay, so that's going to be the width of the pattern. Notice I drew this waist edge tipping off to the side. We're going to add to it and push this out, and that's going to make room for the dart. Okay, so um, this is the bust arc. It's kind of weird because it's down here, but it's also, I mean, it's the width of the pattern. So that's the bust arc. Dart placement is from your center front out to um, out along this line, and it's going to be wherever the tip of your shoulder at the neckline is. So from here down to here. Okay, and again, this can be adjusted later once we try it on if the dart's not good, but that's where your dart placement is. Um, shoulder slope, center front waist to tip of shoulder. Notice this diagonal line right here. This is the shoulder slope line, and it looks just like the measurement we took. But notice it's not going all the way up to the top. So after you determine where your, um, you know, your across shoulder measurement is, you make a, a mark on this line, and then you square down. And this is a guideline. So when you go to do your measurement. So let me use a different, so mine was, my slope to tip of shoulder was 20, was, um, let me get a longer thing here. Mine was 20 and a half. So basically you're going to take your ruler and you're going to be at the tip of the shoulder, I mean here, and you're going to go to 20 and a half and you're just going to, um, have it be 20 and a half here, and you're just going to rotate the ruler till it hits that line. Wherever it hits it, that's where you're going to draw the line. Um, this is not accurate to any measurements. I just drew this out as a guide to show you where the um, all the measurements work to make the bodice. Diane says, Jen, is it just me, or can you remove the little picture from the upper corner? Would you like me to remove the picture from the upper corner? Can you remove your little picture? Yes, I can. Oops. I can move everything, see? Just a minute, let me get that back. Um, here, here's what I'll do. Whoop, I'll make it really small. Okay. Now you can see the mess over here. That's perfect. Let me see if I can get this a little bit better. Yeah, that's better. Okay. All right, so that's the slope of the shoulder, and that's we use that measurement because then what we do is we connect from the tip of the shoulder to the neckline, and that's how we get the shoulder length right here. Okay, so that's the shoulder length. And then that armhole depth that we took from the tip of the shoulder, remember we wrapped the tape measure around to the side seam under the armpit two inches below? That's this line right here. And so this is going to be the base of the armhole right here. Okay, so from the tip of the shoulder around to two inches below the armpit. And then the side seam goes from that measurement down to, um, you know, wherever the, whatever your length is to your waist. 
and actually that works out to be over here so my 10 inches would be here it doesn't go all the way to the bottom this is just the guideline for the width of the pattern okay so your side seam measures from here to how far down this line then we're going to mark out an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half this way and we're going to redraw our final side seam is going to be on an angle like this okay so that's where that's that's how that works and then um the bus span oh also okay so when we did our slope of our shoulder we could also um we also measure from our the tip of our neckline down to our apex and i drew a dot here for my bust level and then you're going to measure at that level from center front across to get your bus span so halfway between um you know between your apex from center front to apex is right here hi diane welcome oh don't be sorry it's okay i know you guys have other things to do and patricia also don't feel bad if you come late i just love it that you're watching um you're watching and certainly if you have questions about taking measurements please post them i just want you to know i'm very proud of the fact that i spent i spent a considerable amount of time catching up on all of my questions so i have no backlog of questions if you ask me a question i will answer you within 24 hours because i answer the questions every morning or every night depending on what i'm doing on that day so feel free to um you know check that with me okay sophie is saying something about you can't download the bodice measurements from hungry is that what you're saying if that's true and you're having trouble i do have a gmail i think my gmail um works internationally i got it because my grading software came from greece and my regular email was blocking emails from greece so if you email me at my um j stern designs j stern designs 37 at gmail.com um i will email it to you if you can't download it okay i hope that's answering your question sophie okay so see now i can now that i'm done talking i can put myself back into a teeny little box here um and what i'm going to do is continue with what i'm showing you here so um so i did the bust band in the waist the across the chest measurement up here that's when i measured right across to where the um from center front to where the armhole would be you're going to measure across there to here and you're going to draw a line and i think you can see what's happening here if i get a curvy ruler let me see if i can find a curvy ruler um yep i will have my curly ruler my curve my french curve ready to go okay wait a minute let me see here Patricia says, Jen, where did you get the paper you are using, please? Okay, so this is dotted, gridded, or alphanumeric paper. If you Google it, you can find it in a million places. I got mine in New York at Steinloff and Stoller. So I think you can order it online from them. Steinloff and Stoller gridded paper. Gridded paper. But if you Google it, you can find it um, in a lot of different lengths. I buy it by 100 yards, and I buy the 45-inch wide paper. You can get it in 36-inch. You can get it in 20-yard rolls, 50-yard rolls. So search around and find the, the amount of paper that you'd like. The benefit of using this paper is if you don't have a French curve, I mean um, an L-shaped ruler, you can use the grid to draw your 
you know, your perpendicular and horizontal and vertical lines accurately. So that's why I like working on gridded paper. You use the grid as a guide to be perpendicular and parallel to each other. Okay, so that's my across the shoulder. And I just want to show you here. So what's going to happen now, this is, you can see here, this is the tip of the shoulder. This is the across chest measurement. So if I use a, a completely different color here, let me use yellow. Basically with a French curve, which I will have, you're going to basically do this. So you're going to end up with, oh, that's not good. Let me use it this color. Oh, I'll use this red one. So basically your, your armhole is going to look something like this. Okay? So that's how you get the armhole. You touch the tip of the shoulder, you touch across shoulder or across chest, and the base of the armhole. So we will be drawing our um, our armhole in. This here, from the tip of the shoulder, um, we're going to measure a certain amount down to get this, which is well at our center front. We're going to come across, and then we're going to come at an angle. And you can see that's going to be the makings or the guide for our front neckline right there. Then down here, I already drew this in, but basically we're going to connect this to this by we're going to take our waist measurement and we're going to minus whatever dart placement we took out of there. And that's going to give us this line. And then we've got this. And then this becomes our dart. So you can see now this is what we're going to end up with when we draft it next week. So that's the sort of the reveal of the bodice shape um, that we're going to end up with after we, you know, do the draft. So that's what we're going to do next week. So please let me know if anybody has any questions about um, taking the measurements that I showed you. Oh, see, I can just do this. I don't even have to switch back and forth in cameras. I can just stretch that out. Um, all right, so please let me know if you have questions about taking these measurements. Um, if you want to work with me during the live next week, we can take our time and I can do each step we can draft each step separately, you know, one at a time. We can take our time and do it. Um, that way, if you have questions while you're drafting, I'll, you can just ask me in real time. So if you want to be in a situation where you're ready to do that, you're going to need your filled out chart, and you're going to need some paper. And if you don't have gridded paper, you can use any sort of pattern paper will work. Um, if you have an L ruler, that is super helpful. If you don't, you can use a wider quilting ruler. So let me just show you that. So like, let's say you don't have gridded paper and you don't have um, an L-shaped ruler. Notice if I take my... If I take my... L-shaped, I mean my um, quil quilting ruler, you can see I can draw my vertical and then I can draw my horizontal here and that will give you the same accurate 90 degree angle that you need. So you can use a quilting ruler um, and then if you have some French curves, have those ready too that will really help us draw in the armhole and I have a ton of French curves, I just don't know where they are at the moment. So. Um, those are the things you're going to need. Um, possibly having colored, different colored markers or pencils will help you as well because then you can keep track of what you're doing. Um, so that's really what you're going to need. The filled out measurement chart, pattern paper to work on, your rulers. Obviously, if you have a clear grid ruler like this, this is really the staple of... Jesus. The staple... <laughs> My daughter stuck a pencil in her fan. It scared me. Um, this ruler or this ruler, 
a French curve will be very helpful. Um, and we will draft the front. Oh, actually. Okay, we're not going to draft the front bodice next week. Let's do the back measurements next week. So, well, you know what? I am going to... You know what? Let's draft the front bodice next week. And then I will also show you how to take the back measurements next week. Because I don't want to drag this on until 2024. So I will figure out how to do the back measurements easily for you next week. And we will draft this front bodice. I, I want to keep the momentum going. Oh, Jamie says this really makes sense. Thanks. And uh, Kathy says... When you download the pattern measurement sheet, you need to click on the follow before it will let you download. Oh, well, okay, so the I uploaded my chart to my new content creator um, storefront, basically. Um, so if you follow me there, then when I upload other things there, I think you'll get notified. This is brand new for me. I really don't know how it works. Um, also, if I want to upload something and then feature it as a pattern in my YouTube store, I have to wait a few days for it to populate. So like, I couldn't just find the link for it in my online store. Like if you went to my, um, store tab on my homepage on my YouTube channel. It's not there yet. That's why I put the link for it there. But if you start following me, and it's not a bad thing. I won't harass you there, but that's just for, um, you know, it's just for following along. But I will tell you that this Google storefront thing is going to become a big thing in the future. They asked me to beta test it. So I'm one of the first content creators working with it. So if you get in there and you start following me, then you'll be able to also follow other people too. So it's just another way to stay connected with, you know, your content creators that you like. Um, well, okay, wait a minute. Uh, oh, yay. So K Kathy said, I think that's why the gal from Hungary couldn't download it. Well, I think it's supposed to be international, and I think actually it's supposed to be easier for for people to purchase things from outside the United States because it doesn't use PayPal. It uses Stripe instead of PayPal. But I can research more on this. Um, Diane says, this will be fun to do. Thanks, Jen. Maybe you could download the back measurement chart if it's done also. Well, I don't, I didn't put the back one up there yet, but I will have the back one up there and ready for you for next week. So you can take measurements with me next week if you want to. So I will have the back measurement chart up there before next Friday. So it will be in my, it'll be there where you can find it. Um, and then you, you can actually take measurements with me next week. So next week we're going to take back measurements and we're going to draft the front. Okay. So get a good night's sleep on Thursday night. Lynn says, I'm really excited about this series. Well, thank you, Lynn. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, Diane already got hers and Patricia says, what a great tutorial. Well, thank you so much. I feel like I had to redeem myself from last week when I totally effed up Anna's hem on her Cardi. But the other thing I wanted to show you was I, I got my Tyrael Magic to try Okay, this is, um, you know, Tyrael Magic. It's the thing that you put on, um, you put this on um, fabric that curls and it keeps it from curling. I brilliantly ordered the one without the squirt bottle, uh, squirt top. So Anna got me this really pretty pink squirt bottle from Target. So I'll be putting this in here and I will be testing that again soon. Um, Oh, Sonia says, this is a pleasure to be live with you. What time do you come on? I just bumped into your video just now. I'm live Monday, uh, sorry, I'm live Fridays at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Um, so it's Fridays at 1 o'clock that I'm live. Um, oh, Kathy says this stuff is awesome. I'm very excited to try it. I just haven't had a chance yet. So I'm going to be trying that, and I will let you know what I think. Um, 
So I just want to thank everybody for joining me. And also, if you didn't notice, we made it over 30,000 subscribers this week. I'm so excited. So I also want to thank all of you for subscribing and following along with me because really, um, you know, sharing different sewing techniques and drafting and, you know, pattern design is like my favorite love. And I love to get together with you guys and work on projects. So I really appreciate you following along. If you're new to my channel, I also upload a Fit Tip Tuesday video. Today, Fit Tip Tuesday happened on Wednesday because I got a little crazy uh, schedule thing going on. But um, usually, Fit Tip Tuesday launches at noon Eastern Standard Time on Tuesdays. So that's my report for today. Um, feel free to email me questions. If you're having trouble taking measurements, either comment here or email me at myjsterndesigns37 at gmail and I will help you. Um, and I'm really looking forward to Friday next week. I'll be wearing the same beautiful tank top so I can do my back measurements um, and then we will draft our front bodices. So that's what we'll be doing next week. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. If anybody's joining me for the Anna Dress class with Stitches Expo this weekend, I am teaching that on Sunday from 3 to 5. If anybody would like to make an Anna Dress and they haven't signed up yet, you can get the download, the PDF download instantly. So there's still time to register if you'd like to join me for that class. Um, other than that, I will see you next week and have a wonderful weekend. And stay cool, please, because it's very warm here. <laughs> so anyway... Thank you guys so much, and um, I will see you again very, very soon.